Welcome to the best in slot tier list for Old School RuneScape. Now, Anon did make this beautiful masterpiece yet again, and I want to just be clear right now, after the invocation, tier one invocation tier list, there was a bit of debate in the comment section. Mostly being everyone assumed that it was their opinion that I was doing a tier list for, that it was a tier list specifically for 500 invocation tier ways. Um, so I just want to make it clear that this is a tier list based on my opinion for best in slot gear in RuneScape, and my opinion is the correct opinion. So don't cry in the comment section how, oh, you think this is better. No, you're wrong. What I say goes, and that's the end of it. There's no way to convince me otherwise. There is no debate to be had. This is the tier list for best in slot item, guys. And we're going to start with the obvious since we've got it here and everyone's talking about it. Hold on. Uh, no. Stop. Let me go here real quick. Okay. Since everyone's talking about it, the mole slippers. Okay, the elephant in the room because everyone's going to sit there. Oh, mole slippers are the best in slot because of uh, an unfortunate accidental meme. I'm just dropping fish on my gym, gym over here. An unfortunate ac accidental meme that happened one day while I was uh, making a video. Everyone loved the mole slippers, so now I'm kind of just forced to wear them. Uh, no matter what, which is annoying, but they're S tier regardless because there will be an uproar if they're not S tier, okay? Completely my opinion, and uh, there's no no better way to put it. If you can't see some of the items at the top, by the way, uh, behind the chat, it's okay. I'll move them out. We can have a discussion about the item when we get there. Best is off of what content, just in general. Uh, it, it's We will discuss the content as the item comes out would be the best way to explain it, I think. Um, for example, we look at the Inquisitor's Mace. This is the best in slot one-handed crushed weapon, I believe. Uh, goes well with the Inquisitor's gear. The problem with the Inquisitor's mace is it's not really very good because, well, you have the scythe being better than it when it comes to using it with Inquisitors. You have the bludgeon being slightly worse than it, but far more affordable. You also have, um, you have, what's it called? There's something else. No, I'm missing it. PvP, it's crap. LMS, it's crap. Because Barrow's gear has good crush defense as opposed to stab and slash. Stop knocking while we're doing a tier list. It's not about you, John. So, to be honest, the mace is a bit of a letdown overall as a weapon. You've got the Keras Partisan, that beats it. At, no, the Strakeness Cudgel is shit compared to this. But the Keras Partisan beats this at the Calfire Queen. So, to be honest, this mace is essentially pretty dead. And I think dead stands for D. Because as an Iron Man, it'd be a good drop. But outside of that, it's kind of garbage and not needed. It's an underutilized weapon, but it's also a pretty useless weapon in general. If I was going to get a drop from the Nightmare in terms of Inquisitor's pieces, this is the last one I would want. I don't even know how much it's worth and I don't care. Okay. Next up, we're going to do the Twisted Buckler, which is, I believe, the best offhand DPS ranged equipment in the game. This is the only... No, wait, I think... That doesn't give strength bonus, does it? It's the only strength bonus you can get in your offhand, I believe, for range as well. Uh, when you're looking at it without Inquisitor's bonus, though. If I look at it with or without with Inquisitor's bonus, the Cypher's better. And the Bludgeon holds up pretty well to it, you know? So it's pretty useless even with Inquisitor's bonus. That's my point. Um, yeah, sorry. I think the Twisted Buckler is... It, it's definitely the strongest. I think it's the only range strength as well offhand. The problem is, it means you have to use a crossbow. Which crossbows aren't really used that much in this game. I oh, know, uh, Zamak, crossbow, spec. That's it. You're specking and then you're putting it back. That's my point. It's kind of garbage. Because then you're T-bowing and bowfering everything else. So ranging with a crossbow in general is shit. Unless you're using the Dragon Hunter crossbow, I guess, for Vorkuff. But who's doing that? Melee's better. So I think the Twisted Buckler is C-tier based on the fact that using crossbows in this game, when it comes to best in slot content, is shit. But it is the best offhand you can get. So as far as offhands go... It's pretty, it's, it's comfortably in the C tier for me. Black Salamander. Any Salamander content in this game is gay. Combat achievements have, pro have proved that. Um, so if you do anything to do with Salamanders and you enjoy it, you're gay. Fuck you. Next, Blowpipe. Um, Blowpipe used to be the best ranged weapon in the game. It, would, it was better than anything else in the game. Um, then they nerfed it. Now it's shit. But it is still best in slot in a few places. You want to use it in Theater of Blood, uh, especially for Nilo Room. You want to use it in TOA, unless you've got a Bofa. 
Um, and in Cox, no, you wouldn't really use it there. You could still use it pretty well on Vorkarf and uh, certain phases in the Hydra. I think as far as being best in slot goes, it does a pretty decent job. People still use it in the Inferno pretty well. I think the Blowpipe is a B-tier best in slot weapon. It was S back in the day, but it is now B-tier. It's still pretty affordable to run. Um, and the spec is pretty badass, if it hits. That guy using, was using a Salamander at the Callisto Mass before. Yeah, it's funny as. But it's, the Salamander's a crap. Celebrating? I think so. Yes. Now the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. One of the most unfortunate weapons. Now, a funny thing... No, hold on. I can't remember. Did they buff or nerf it? I think they buffed this. When this first released, it was shit. I believe it was 15%. Accuracy and strength buffs on buff, sorry on relief. Now it's twenty five percent, or it's the other way around. One of the two. Um, where is this best in slot? You could say Ohm. You could say this is best in slot at Ohm, but you wouldn't use it at Ohm if you have a Bofa, because for the rest of the radio crystal Bofa, it's not that much better than the Bofa that it's not worth bringing the switch. You may as well just stick to using the Bofa on Ohm. If you have a Tebow, you wouldn't touch it in Cox. So really, you're using it at. You could use it at the Hydra. I did use it at the Hydra at one point because I wanted to. Uh, I guess because I'm a dickhead, um, but I did use it at, you can use it at Vorkarf, even though milling Vorkarf is better. To be honest, this crossbow is being left in the dust. The best place I find to use it is at Drake's on Slayer Tars. Not many people like doing Drake's, of course, but they're a good superior chance. Otherwise, it, Galvec, funny story about this weapon. When I did the Galvec speed run time, I, f I had much more success with the rune crossbow, 100%. That's obviously just RNG, but for that reason alone, this this weapon here um, will be sitting D tier with the mace because I personally don't have some good, a whole lot of good experience with the crossbow. And to be honest, anywhere where the crossbow shines, uh, other weapons shine much brighter upon it for sure. I think that's fair. Carol's lever top, arguably one of the best range tops in the game. Now I know you have Crystal and you have Missouri, but uh, Carol's lever top is still pretty best in slot, and it's best in slot in LMS. And when I say best in slot in LMS, I mean if you're wearing a Carol's top, the only reason you're dying at that point is because you're shit. You should not lose a fight in LMS if you have a Carol's lever top. And the other person doesn't, of course. Uh, Carol's lever top is cheap, affordable, easy to fix, easy to find if you're a foe. And um, all around has great stats. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the Carol's lever top. I'm putting it in S tier. One of the best tops in the game. Absolutely. It's also very Chad. Part of the Chad build, which is a bonus. Next, we have the Armadale Crossbow. Um, the only reason you'd have an Armadale Crossbow in this game is because you just picked one up. As soon as you get it, it goes on the Grand Exchange. F tier weapon. Absolute dog shit. Terrible weapon. Although in LMS, it's good. It's good in LMS. And LMS counts. So we're going to make it... Fuck off. We're going to make it E tier. Because it's good in LMS. Okay, I will take that back. Alexander, thank you for the 18 months. Next, we have the Nightmare Eldritch Staff. My favorite variant of the Nightmare Staff, if I'm honest, because the spec is amazing. And it's really good in the Inferno. It's really effective there. That's about it for where you would ideally use it. Um, obviously in Slayer. I think it's really good at... Um, is it Kraken? Or, no, people use Volatile at Kraken, I think. Um, I think overall, this staff does a good job. It's limited to really just being a, a, a Nightmare... Uh, sorry, an Inferno fun weapon. It's a B-tier weapon. It's great otherwise. Kriara? Why would you take this to Kriara? Do you take it to Kriara? It might work there, I don't know. But I, th I think B tier, because it's kind of limited to just where you would use it. Barrel Chest Anchor. Um, really, Barrel Chest Anchor is just a copium weapon. You, you believe that having a Dragon War Hammer helps you, BGS helps you, but you're too lazy or shit or unlucky to get one. Uh, so you use Barrel Chest Anchor. So, E tier, because it's crap. It's an absolute crap weapon. Uh, Kriara, why would you use the armor to crossbow at Kriara? It's crap. Dragon Mace. Funny thing, I know we're just blitzing through this, but, you know, there's a lot of items to go through. Dragon Mace. Funny thing about the Dragon Mace is Maces used to be shit. Then Maces got good when they made them four tick weapons. They got a five prayer bonus. I went with the Rune Mace on the hardcore rather than the Rune Sword or Rune Skimmy. I didn't go Rune Skimmy because that is a waste of my time. Rune Mace all the way. Dragon Mace does a great job. The spec absolutely fucks. What you do for the Dragon Mace to make it the most effective is to have the highest possible accuracy and strength bonus you can. You press the spec bar, you click the enemy, everything dies. That's the best way to put it. And because of the Dragon Mace, um, let me find it. Uh, it's over here. My Fasani Nightmare Guide is the most successful Nightmare Guide on YouTube. 
Uh, typically, all my guides are like that. But the Fasani Nightmare Guide specifically is one of my most successful guides I've ever made. I dare I say, I think it's number two. Uh, number four. Um, and I use a Dragon Mace in that. And a lot of people were stunned at how good it is. Because people sleep on items. And that's why I'm here. Because my brain exceeds the standard RuneScape player's brain by a long shot. This is an S tier weapon. And there's nothing you can do about it. It is Chad. It does damage. And if you don't like the Dragon Mace, that's okay. You're entitled to the wrong opinion. You don't have to use it if you have better weapons. That's fine. This isn't the best weapon in the game. But it's fucking good at what it does. Absolutely. New sword from Giant's Foundry. Put down the anchor. The anchor has a different spec to the new sword, I believe. The guy that helped my first Fasani KC. It helped 170,000 people with their first KC. Including did a bitter. Um, Missouri Mask. Uh, Missouri Mask is D tier. I don't need to really explain why. It's a shit helmet. There's no point switching your helmet because once you have the Twisted Ancestral hat, that's all you need to wear. It's the best hat. It's a fancy hat. And if you need poison protection, you go Serp Helm with a mutagen if you got one. Otherwise, there is no point bringing the Missouri helmet anywhere because it looks like crap compared to the fancy hat with the Twisted Kit. D tier hat. Hat head. Hat helmet. Now we've got the Elitist Ward uh, Fortified, I believe. This is with the Arcane Spirit Shield attached. Never had the pleasure to use one myself, I believe. At all. Can I fuck off? I don't think I've ever actually been able to use one myself. I have both items on the gym. I just can't break down the spirit shield because then my team misses out. So, I haven't had the opportunity to use it myself, I think. Maybe I had it once for Tob. But, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best offhand mage weapon in the game. And if you're using it with a Sang stuff, you're going to absolutely blow numbers and have a lot of fun. I believe this is a <coughs> A-tier best in slot weapon. Because it is essentially the best major offhand in the game. Why wouldn't you have it? It's beautiful. Moving on to Dragon Claws. Dragon Claws are fun. Dragon Claws are great. Who doesn't love Dragon Claws? Dragon Claws. The reason the Dragon Claws are great is because, well, they do a lot of damage. They do a lot of damage. They're extremely accurate. They're more accurate than God Swords, I believe. And who doesn't love just slashing cunts like this? Four times, big hits, almost every time. But it, when it hits zeros and ones... You wish they were in the bin. And because of that, these will be landing comfortably at a C tier spec weapon. Best and slot weapon. Because they have also been outclassed by, let me find it, the, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I don't think I'm going to put the Void Waker on here. The Void Waker is better. I don't see it on here though. I know the Void Waker is less max hit, but the Void Waker hits no matter what. I know the Dragon Claws can be used in more spots than the Void Waker, but the Void Waker hits no matter what. And the Void Waker hits fucking hard. And it's better in every way. I love the Void Waker more than the Claws. The Claws would have been maybe B or even A, but since Void Waker, they're C tier. I don't, I don't need them anymore. You don't need them. It's that simple. What's this? The Dragonfire Ward? Can someone think of a reason to use the Dragonfire Ward? If you had all the money in the game, or if you were doing any content you wanted, why would you use Dragonfire Ward? Exactly. F tier. Exactly. Vorkarth? Why? Twisted Buckler. Exactly. Ranging at Vork? Twisted Buckler. Anyone else? Got a clue scroll. Nest on the hardcore. Exactly. Alright, Va Zarat Van Braces. A lot of people think these are great. They're amazing. Because you just drop them and you can use them, I believe, straight away, right? I don't think you need to fix them or anything. Um, also, yeah, milling Vorkarf is better, 100%. Um, Zarat Van Braces are the only offhand ranged strength bonus in the game, and the only offhand item that is better than Barrow's Gloves when it comes to ranging. The problem is they are insignificant, they are expensive, next is shit, and to be honest, if you're going to upgrade your your setup, this is probably one of the last items you'd ever buy because they're crap. They're unnecessary and they almost make no difference. They are C tier only because they have value. They're just shit. Okay. They, 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 they fit with the Dragon Claws and the Twisted Buckler where it's like, yeah, you know, you could live without them for the rest of your life, but it'd be nice to have them just in case. Abyssal Bludgeon. I used to not like the Bludgeon. I used to think the Bludgeon was utter horse shit, a terrible weapon and a waste of time. On a main account, I would never own a bludgeon. Ever. It would be pointless on a, on a main account to own a bludgeon. But on an Iron Man, I know they're shit to get, but whoa, I fell in love with the bludgeon on the game. 
when when Fergo finished the bludgeon for us, I tell you, my opinion on the bludgeon shifted pretty quickly, especially at Nightmare. I do love the bludgeon. Its spec is horseshit, no matter what you say. I know, it's really good. You can hit hard with it, or you can just take any other weapon and do even better. Uh, but otherwise, grinding for it is really crap, but using it, it's beautiful. I do love the bludgeon. It is an A-tier crush weapon, for sure. It does look fucking beautiful too, yeah, it's a really good looking weapon. Barrow's Gloves are more tanky too, right? Barrow's Gloves, I believe they are, yes. Dragon Hunter Lance. Took me a long time to get myself one of these. Over 3,000 Hydra kills to get my first claw, and then 45 kills to get my second claw. It was a bit of a cock tease, but we finally got the Lance, and it's beautiful, especially with Inquisitors on Crush. I think it makes an amazing noise. It looks good, it goes hard. Almost zero issues with the Dragon Hunter Lance, except the fact that the Fang is better than it. The Fang beats it at Vorkuff at um, King Black Dragon, at pretty much every dragon. It's only really useful now in Ulm. It's useful on the other dragons, don't get me wrong, but if you have a Fang, which is cheaper, you may as well run the Fang. I think the Dragon Hunter Lance fell off because of the Fang, and I think that's, I think it's time the Lance gets the same love that the Dragon Hunter Crossbow got when it came out. And I wanna just confirm quickly, Dragon Hunter, crossbow that absolutely did happen i just want to make sure that it got buffed when it came out let's have a look i could be wrong uh when it was released there you go the the damage and accuracy bonuses were increased from 10 to 30 percent on release and then three years later dropped from 30 to 25 percent for the dragon hunter crossbow so when it came out it was a 10 percent accuracy and damage buff went up to 30 percent dropped to 25 percent i think the lance needs the same love that might be a hot take but i think the lance absolutely needs the same love. If I go Lance up here, the Lance is on is 20%. I think we can get 25%. It needs to be just better than the Fang, in my opinion. It, it needs to be noticeably better, but just better, in my opinion. Because otherwise, you are completely devaluing the entire Slayer, Hydra, and Dragon Hunter Lance grind, unless you're in Ulm, in my opinion. Return Lance to base Zami Huster stats. Even that might work. I don't know. But that's my opinion. I think it could be better, and I think it's time for a buff. Um, I also have a hot take as well that I saw on the Sebe Ramble, um, which I I can go into another time. But uh, for that reason, it's B tier, because it's just outclassed by the Fang, unfortunately. For being the most common purple in tier way, Fang is too strong. I don't think so. I just think everything else around it is shit. Uh, moving on to the Scythe. The Scythe is an S tier weapon, simply because... No matter how expensive it is, no matter what you think, even if you don't charge it, um, it is fun to use. There's nothing more fun in this game when it comes to melee than using a scythe. It's that simple. If you haven't had fun doing melee, you haven't used a scythe. It's that simple. Nothing is more fun than swinging that scythe at cunts. Easily. Next. And it looks badass, of course. The Dragon Fire Shield used to be one of the best uh, offhands in the game. Now it's dead content. Uh, because you have super anti-fire potions, you have... Um, well, that's it. Dragon and Avernic Defenders. So, this is a dead uh, item. There's no point in having it anymore, really, unless you're just being lazy. Uh, F, -tier, F tier item. It's a shit item to grind. It's incredibly cheap now, so it's not even worth getting the drop anymore. And it doesn't really do fuck all for you. There's not really many uses. DFS spec is lowest to see in PvP? It is. It's really good to see in PvP. But if you take it into PvP, you're probably going to fucking die as well. You're wasting time. Jerk off uh, to Declaw and Scythe. On Thermi, is that good? It's that good? Yeah, it's true. Very true. Running for morning coffee and shopping, tossing on the stream. See you later, Kenny. Thanks for coming by, man. What do we got here? This is the... Can you stop? What is this? The Harmonized Orb stuff. We have a Harmonized Orb, but no Nightmare stuff, I believe, on the gym at the moment. Um, when I have used it, it's been great. It's been excellent fun. And it's really only used now. I, I think... The theory is that it can out-DPS the Shadow in Fasani's Nightmare. But that's... I think the, the Shadow has better overkill, I believe. I can't remember the logic behind it. Um, and I think it was still better value to bring the Shadow anyway at the end of the day. But uh, it's really hard to contest this anywhere in the game. It's really hard to find a use for it in the game, actually, is a better way to put it, other than Chambers of Zeric. And to be honest, it's a waste of time because you could just use the Shadow on the Ice Demon. I know it's not as fast, but unless you're speedrunning, what's the point? This is becoming dead, deader and deader content by the day, unfortunately. Um, which puts it in D tier because you wouldn't really have one unless you had the spare money at the end of the day. That is for the harmonized stuff, which I can't grab for some fucking reason. Goes in D tier. Shadow comes with thralls, harmonized is not true. Very true. Alright. Arcane Spirit Shield. 
Um, I finished this completely. Spirit Shield, Elixir, and Sigil in 28 KC on the Gim. So I'm going to try my best to not be biased here, but um, it is a A tier shield. Because sometimes I miss. My, my Sang Staff misses, and I get very mad, and I wonder why, because it's a very good offhand. Um, but otherwise, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that shield. Absolutely nothing wrong. It is a beautiful shield. does great in the Inferno. Uh, it's great if you want an affordable shield. Well, it's 100 something mil, but... Actually, yeah, why wouldn't you? If you don't have the level, I guess, to make the, the Elitist Ward yet. Otherwise, perfect shield. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, we've got the Necklace of Anguish. This is automatically, without debate, a D tier item. Okay. It's a shit item. I don't care what you say. Anyone that takes the Anguish and the Occult, which is on this list maybe? I don't think so. Maybe it is behind there. I can't quite see. Um, anyone that takes the Anguish and Occult switch to the Inferno on their first KC, unless you're speedrunning, you need to take a Fury. You stop taking the next switch. It is the most useful. Like, are you are, are you not using your fucking heads? And, uh, and people that run the Inferno or trying to teach Inferno give the same dumbest shit advice, and they're like, take the next switch. It is the most. It's the biggest waste of inventory space in the game. It's a five range strength and accuracy difference. The occult is a is a two percent. Sorry, a two mage accuracy. The magic damage doesn't matter. The ten percent magic accuracy. It's copium. Okay, you're filling yourself with the wrong gears and the wrong ideas. If you're going for your first KC, this is useless, and I will stand by that till the day I die. It is better to not take it and take a fury. I promise you. This neck is shit. It does great elsewhere, but the fury is so much better value that the, it's hard to justify why you would use this ranging unless you had the money for one. If you have one, that's great. But if you, if you can afford a Fury, you can do the same content at the same rate with the same people, get the same times, do the same damage, and have no difference. You will not notice the difference, ever. You will not. I guarantee you. If you have the same gear, one guy has a Fury, one guy has an, an Anguish, 9 times out of 10, it's 50-50 who does the most damage. Me, Monkasing, at bringing the next switch into Rage. Having a next switch is in, in Rage is fine because you have the money for it. Plus 1 damage? Exactly. Who cares? You have the money for it, Phoenix. My point is... You wouldn't chase this item unless you had the money for one. In my opinion, probably the last neck piece you should get. Next year, the Spectral Spirit Shield has one use, I believe, which is Cerberus, correct? Uh, which is a shit boss and makes this automatically shit. And you wouldn't buy it unless you had the money for it. To be honest, especially since you can just red, do uh, you can just door red X the door with Cerberus anyway. Spectral Spirit Shield is crap, 100%. Okay. Then you got Guardian Boots. Uh, Guardian boots look really good. They're tanky boots. They're bandos boots. There's not really too much else to them. Would I use them? Not really. But I think they do look better than most other boots. And I think they're probably one of the more better value boots in the game. I will make them C tier. I do like Guardian boots. Then we have the Tumican's Shadow. This is an uncharged Tumican Shadow, but it is a Tumican Shadow. I think this item is... I've only used it very recently. I think. I just don't know if it's A or S tier. I think the Tumican Shadow is an A tier weapon. But it can be S tier. And I think in the future it might become S tier one day. And I think the more the game updates and the more magic damage comes out, it will become more S tier. But I, th I think... It's A tier because it has one unfortunate flaw that the Scythe and the Tebow don't really have. I, th I think it is A tier at the moment. Just for now. And the reason why is because of this weapon here, the Sang stuff. Now I know more damage means less time fighting, which means less damage taken. Absolute most narrow-minded fucking idea. Of, like, when people tell me that, when people don't try to tell me if you kill something faster... That means you take less damage, which means you're fighting less, which means you don't need to eat as much. I feel like they haven't played the game because they've never heard of something called RNG, which quite prevalently fucks a lot of players. Um, and DPS calculators are a terrible thing to use as a guideline in this game. There are times where you need heals, and there are times where the Sang Staff, along with the Shield, will come in handy. Like doing no prep, solo, cocks. No prep solo Sam Cox. Even if it's not solo. No preps in general. 
I think the same stuff can come in handy really well. The same stuff can also be a really good trade-off in side theater of blood. And it's also a shit ton cheaper than the shadow is. If you're doing mage, for example, you want the offhand for the extra accuracy, you can have the shadow, although the code is a pretty good switch anyway. Um, I think the Sang Staff is the only reason the Tomb of Shadow is A tier, because there are times where the Sang Staff can be really good, and the Sang Staff is very relevant, because there's no other way to heal yourself. You can use Blood Magic, of course, but one, um, we're in a time now where if you use Ancients, people literally bully you for some fucking reason, and we're also in a time where you have Blood Fury. For ranging, I guess you have Blowpipe, um, but range is... There's not really many situations where range you get fucked too hard. Um, and then you've got this. You have the Eldritch Staff, I guess, but I think the Sang Staff, it holds its own still pretty well. Not against DPS. I'm not saying it's better DPS. But utility-wise, this is very relevant and very good. So I'm putting the Sang Staff also at A tier. Shouldn't have sold the TV and gone to Sang Staff for Shadow. No, I think you made the right choice still, Phoenix, 100%. Oh yeah, and the, and the kit on the same stuff looks fucking amazing. Is it, uh, it is illegal to have the shadow the same as the ward when it makes the ward basically redundant? No, I think the ward is relevant because it's cool and um, same stuff. That That is why. And also ward with like harmonize and stuff. But they're, they're A tier for different reasons. They're not A tier like on like, you know, it's not because, wow, you should have all these A tier. It's just the reasons that they're A tier or the reasons that I've made them A tier is why they're A tier. Understand? Like, we're not we're not comparing fucking Dragon Mace to Scythe at the same time, you know? Ancient Godsword. I've only used it inside LMS, and I love the Ancient Godsword. Feels like it's not as accurate as any other Godsword. Like, the AGS seems to hit more, but then I think about it, and it probably doesn't, because I went PKing a lot, and the AGS was fucking shit. Um, but I love the Ancient Godsword. I think it's amazing. This is an S-tier weapon. I love that spec. It is so good. You just... You just you freeze someone, you AGS them. It, it's it's amazing. You stack damage and you, you combo them out or you get healed anyway. Fang. I think we could all agree that the Fang is an A tier weapon. It used to be S tier because it used to be incredibly broken. Um, but I think the Fang also ruins a lot of... Not integrity, but it just kind of... It hinders a lot of other items in the game. For example, the Dragon Hunter Lance. Uh, the Scythe. It kind of removes the worry of hitting a Dragon Warhammer in Tecton. It removes the need to farm a blade or a tentacle whip in Tob. Uh, you can even use it in Ulm, perfectly fine. I think the Fang does shit on a lot of other weapons. And I really want to make it S tier, but I just feel like sometimes I look at it and go, you're an asshole. So I think, I think A tier is better for the Fang. It used to be better. It used to be better. If it was still how it was, definitely S tier, but... Sometimes it lets me down, and sometimes even the spec hits zero, and the spec shouldn't hit zero. Theoretically, it shouldn't, because you have increased accuracy on something that is already incredibly accurate, and it still hits zero, and I just go, how is this fucking possible? S tier because of 25? I don't know what that means. 25% spec, it is a really good spec, yeah. They nerfed it, so A tier for sure, yeah. The, the spec is really nice. Alright, now we have the Blade of Saddle. Another item that I overlooked. I didn't like the Blade of Saddle. I thought it was a shit item. Reason... It's because the Tent Whip is so cheap, so cheap to use, that why would you use this over the Tent Whip? Because the difference is minuscule, right? Then I got a Gim. Then I pulled three Enhanced Seeds. And then the rest of my team collectively we pulled like eight out of ten Enhanced Seeds. So I got a Blade. And corrupted it. And to be honest, I love it. I think it is great. It is noticeably better than the Whip. I just feel like it is. It's probably Copium. It's more of that RNG, you know. You can't notice the difference, but you do anyway. Um, the upkeep is nothing once you corrupt it. Uh, which is only a thousand shards instead of two thousand, thankfully. And you can change the color of it. S tier weapon. It is absolutely beautiful. I love it. And it's good. If it's your best stab weapon, it is good in tier A before 300s, before you have a fang. It's better than the Zami Hasta. Seriously, run the blade on stab. If you've got one and you're an Iron Man, absolutely utilize it. It is good. Very good. Zamorak Godsword. For me personally, not a very good Godsword. I don't use a PKing, and I know that it's good inside Cox on Mumadal. Otherwise, I don't personally see a use for it inside PVM. PvP, I would rather use any other Godsword. So I personally would E tier Zamorak Godsword. I don't use it. It's not part of my skill set. Next, we have a Empty Nightmare Staff. Um, 
which is completely useless. So that's E tier as well. Because if it hasn't got an orb, I don't have time for it. Now we have the Staff of the Dead, Toxic Staff of the Dead. Um, I don't think I can... I think this is a pretty dead item. PvP, yes, of course. It's great in PvP. And um, just the normal Staff of the Dead is great as well. But I think outside of that, I don't really see a need for using this Staff. Because there's so many different magic weapons. Kodai, even the Nightmare Staff itself. Um, a Master Wand. Even Ivan Staff these days, you know. Sang Staff, the Tridents. Just kind of make this feel pretty redundant once you move towards raiding. Uh, so this is also an E tier weapon, I believe. Still not going to pull MVP over three ciphers at top. It doesn't matter. MVP doesn't matter. If you care about MVP beyond like a, a friendly level with the people you're raiding with, uh, you you are taking the game way too seriously. Like I, I remember raiding with uh, someone. So I was raiding in a group with a certain individual as well. And every time I was streaming it and we'd finish the raid and I would go check the book to see how everyone did and who got MVP. And this arrogant, you know, two-faced piece of shit was like, there's no point checking the book. I'm always going to be MVP. That's not the point. You're a dickhead, okay? You've got a small cock. And it's just that, that energy is just so fucking cringe. I don't have time for that. You know, I wonder who that was. Well, you, yeah, some of you will know who it was. It's, it's, it's the most, like, no wonder people don't fucking like you. So I just, like... Keep it friendly within the people you're, you're, you're raiding with. That's about it, you know? It's okay. Absolutely okay. Next, we got the Abyssal Whip. Dirt cheap. Um, and effective. That's about it. The only shit thing about the Abyssal Whip is Iron Man have to wait till level 85 to get a whip, which for main accounts, you love that. This is a classic. This is reliable. This will never die. It'll be cheap. It'll never be redundant as a weapon because you can find one everywhere. S tier. Abyssal Whip will always be a good boy. Everyone relies on the Abyssal Whip. At the end of the day, if you don't know what to take into the wilderness PvPing, an Abyssal Whip slash Abyssal Tentacle will always have your back. And they hit, man. For those who don't know, it was beans, exactly. Don't be friendly with people at TOA who do less, do 5k less damage and die. No, you should be friendly with everyone you raid with. Because at the end of the day, um, you had to come to my channel to learn how to play the game. So just remember that. You needed me to get to where you were in Vorkarth. Next, we have the Bronze G plate body. Bronze G. Now, funny thing about this plate body is that everyone begins with a Bronze G plate body. Some of you don't have it yet, but you will eventually. If you have a Bronze G plate body, what this means is you have early access to the Hark Ryan Man series that I upload to my YouTube channel. Seriously, you do. This is not a, this is not a scam. You also have... Uh, access to specific videos on my channel that no one else will ever be able to see and it also adds three inches to the end of your cock by owning a bronze G plate body for one dollar a month using the join button down below on the stream or on the channel join the channel memberships join the cheeky n words and grab yourself an s tier bronze G plate body which does upgrade you know the, the longer you keep the plate body everyone starts at bronze G absolute s tier item best in slot Seriously, this is the this is like, I half an hour before the stream, I opened the the, the tier list. I didn't make this. Anon did this. Okay, sell out, sell out. These nuts. You've got an adamant plate body. What do you mean sell out? You've been selling out. You've been you've been. I've been selling out to you for the past fucking six plus months. Fuck you, SGS. Used to be my favorite weapon. I love the SGS. Let me tell you something funny about the SGS. Until the Void Waker came out, this was the weapon of choice for demonic gorillas. A lot of people say no. You want to take the arc light? No. You just SGS, okay? You'd blowpipe, melee weapon, SGS, because you just donk them, spec them, straight back to range. And it was so fun. I loved it. Uh, unfortunately, I grew up, and the Void Waker came out, and I started an Iron Man, so I didn't have one. And Demonic Gorillas are absolutely fucking gay to farm. A tier weapon. Beautiful spec, so fun, so reliable, incredibly accurate. Yes, it misses sometimes, but even if it hits less than 10, you still get a boost um, on your health and prayer as if you hit a 10 which is beautiful. Great for the Inferno, great for Slayer. Almost nothing wrong with the SGS at all. And it's getting cheaper, which is good, I'm pretty sure. Is it getting played by the real trading though? No, it's not. Just returned recently, so is the Fang generally better than the Rapier? <coughs> we will get to the Rapier in a minute. What's this? This is an Archer's Ring? With the arrow? Archer's Ring. F tier ring. Here are the following reasons to own an Archer's Ring. You're a dickhead. 
That's it. Until Desert Treasure comes out and we get buffed Archer's Ring, this ring is redundant. Always has been, always will be. Anyone that suggests it's using an Archer's Ring is a dickhead. It's the most accurate attack style in the game. The Bofa doesn't miss. Yes, the T-Bow noodles. It's going to noodle regardless of the ring. Okay? But the range is so accurate and so dominant as an attack style that the Archer's Ring is so unnecessary. So unnecessary. Especially when you have Suffering, Brimstone Ring, Light Bearer, Ring of the Gods. There is no need to own this overpriced hunk of garbage. Now, it might be worth investing in one now because of Desert Treasure 2 coming out. I'm not going to suggest it. It might be worth it. In my opinion, it'd probably just be better to go and farm one because they're pretty common. Um, but honestly, it is so dumb. And people, I see people taking this to the Inferno. I'm like, why? You're not missing. If you're missing, it's it, like, that's, you're going to miss with that ring or without it. It is such a bad fucking ring. Terrible ring. Absolutely terrible ring and overpriced. Then you've got the Warrior's Ring, which adds a slash accuracy bonus and no strength bonus, I believe. Um, but, for argument's sake, I'm going to put an E tier. Because I'd rather have one over the Archer's Ring, because it's not going to cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah, Archer's Ring is 4 mil because prices of items in this game are determined by opinion, not fact. The opinion of content creators, uh, the opinion of people who don't know how to justify in-game content, and the opinion of people who are idiots are the reason that Archer's Rings are 4 mil. Not the facts from people like me who are educated and think about things before I do them. Investing in the Ancient Stars now is the move? I don't think it is. I don't think that's the move at all because the Tumican Shadow is still a thing and it's not going anywhere. Um, next we've got the... what's that? That's the... Tyrannical Ring? Which one's that? No, not Tyrannical Ring. Um, that's the... Yeah, this Tyrannical Ring, which does Callisto's Ring, Crush, Crush, and that's it. Um, pretty useless ring. I dare say F tier, because, let's be honest, the Berserk Ring does the same thing, but with a Strength Bonus, right? So, there's there's no way you would, you would buy this ring in a million years. How much is it worth? What's it going for? 150k? Well, I mean, you'd buy it if you misclick. That's about it. So, they go for out price, really? No, no, they're three times the out price. Unfortunately. Alright, next, the Brimstone Ring. I didn't know the Brimstone Ring had a passive until very recently. The Brimstone Ring has a 10% chance. Brimstone underscore ring. I, I, I want to get these numbers right. The Brimstone Ring has a 25% chance to reduce, uh, uh, to ignore 10% of your opponent's magic defense. So it's really good in Ulm. It's really good in CMs. Until the Light Bearer came out, of course. Um, it's excellent in CMs. I don't know why everything just moved like that. Hold on. Um, and it, it was pretty good in um, normal raids as well. Normal cocks as well. But ignores 10% of your opponent's magic defense. The Light Bearer kind of killed it. But overall, still a great ring and a B tier ring. Absolutely worth having one just in case. Good for PvP. Never used it in PvP. But it wouldn't surprise me if people did. I think the Light Bearer is still the way to go. Because getting off those extra special attacks is really, really strong. But still a great ring. And it's worth good money if you farm one, too. B for Brimstone, of course. And what is this ring? What the fuck is that? Um, I, I don't know what ring that is. That's one from... Um, let me have a look. It's from... Venonatus. Not Vedion. Venonatus. Which is the... What's it called? Treasonous ring. I didn't even know what this does. This ring does stab bonus. That is F tier. Cool. Moving on. Right, we have the Serp Helm. Uh, in my opinion, one of the best helmets in the game. I think this helmet is underrated. On release, this helmet, everyone uses it. The reason Zora goes up, when new content comes out, Zora goes up. Uh, Zora becomes a very farm farmable, profitable boss. Be budget best is not Helm? Yeah, essentially. Yes, it's got poison protection and it helps with inflicting poison, but it's also extremely tanky. And the difference between this and the need is not face guard is what, one strength bonus? <laughs> right, okay. Is that worth 30 mil? Probably not. Dirt cheap. Does cost a bit of money long run to run, but nothing too excessive. Uh, but it's always reliable, and when new updates and bosses come out, that is the number one helmet people go to. People turn to the Serb Helm just in case of unexpected 
intense amounts of poison. After one KC, they throw it back in the strength, uh, in the in the bank. It's plus two strength bonus, is it? I'm pretty sure it's one, right? The face guard is plus six, and this is plus five. I could be wrong. Are you sure? This is not face guard. Is plus one. It's got to be. And it's less tanky, but it's got a prey bonus of plus three. Because it's plus six on the face guard, and then we got Serp Helm. Serp Helm is plus five. Yep, plus five and tankier. In my mind, there's no need to use a face guard over the Serp Helmet. Plus, if you get the Tans mutagen or any mutagen, it looks great. So, yes. What the fuck is this? Proselyte? Um, I mean, yeah. There's no, nothing beats proselyte when it comes to doing Slayer, prayer training. X Ex excellent, but otherwise it's kind of crap because... I mean, is it B tier? Yeah, I think it's B tier. Because you have to own it and you've got to use it. I can't think of anything you'd use over it normally. Maybe monk robes, but what would be the point? I'd say B tier. Because sometimes I like to use barriers instead, so that way I can also default to food if I need to. Um... Especially if I'm trying to kill like gargoyles and things like that, but I want to do it all in one trip. Thinking about getting uh, the Nezzy Helm for TOA, but only because I have 600k so you can understand how to not get poisoned. I don't think it's worth the money. You may, uh, like, you're better, better off just going straight to a Torva Helmet. But uh, the difference between the Serp Helm and the Nezzy Helmet is minuscule. It's not really worth it. Why is Anguish D tier? You're going to have to uh, rewatch the video to find out after I upload it. Zealot Rose better than Pr Proselyte? Yeah, but Zealot Rose implies you have to go to Shades of Morton. Who the fuck wants to do that? Anubis. Uh, a cult amulet is the best magic neck piece in the game. Because of the shadow, well actually, no, it's, it's, it's amazing in general, let's be honest. I think it is B tier. Because the fury is still good. I know you don't get the extra damage, and if you have a shadow, you're gonna use it, of, of course. And the 10% damage is massive. But the, few, it's, it's, the accuracy doesn't change. And where you don't always need to rely on that extra hit, the extra 2 max hit or 5 max hit, whatever, depending on what you're using, it's not always super important if you don't need it, okay? Especially in the Inferno. In the Inferno, if you're going for your first KC, don't take an Occult and Anguish Switch. I keep telling you this. But the Occult has many uses, especially the higher your major level is with the Saturated Heart as well. Um, so I, I think it's dirt cheap. It's A tier, actually, because it is dirt cheap, isn't it? You can pretty much get your hands on it for nothing. Yeah, okay, Occult is A tier, for sure. Rapier. Um, I've always said the Rapier. The, there's only one kind of person, or two kind of people in this game that own Rapiers, okay? There are two kinds of players. Iron Men and Women. Those are the only two players that own a Rapier. No sane main account owns a Rapier. You know why? Because Stab has been dead on release since its release, since the release of the rapier. Now, TOA came out, and it was great, until you got a fang. Um, Next came out, and it was great, until you went to TOA and got a fang. Um, so, otherwise, the rapier is kind of shit. It's great for Slayer. Oh, Slayer's the only reason I owned one, but you have a whip. For two mil, which is a fraction of the price of the rapier, you can get almost the same results, and there are more things in the game that are weaker to slash than stab. And if you need to stab something, I've got a 30 mil item that you can invest in that fucks dragons up. It's called a Dragon Hunter Lance. Even better, 25 mil for a fang. Okay. Rapier is pretty shit. It's strong, it's accurate, it's great in LMS. But in terms of like utility, why would you spend the money on a rapier? You wouldn't. It's an E tier item. You wouldn't buy it unless you're a. Well, if you're an Iron Man, you get it as a drop, you'd use it. Totally fine. Like, that's. You're, you're restricted to that sort of mindset. Or if you're a woman, because what well, the rapier looks so good. Rapier needs a spec or passive. Um, I think the rapier should be more accurate when you're wearing Justicia. Just because it's all with the rate, keep with the theme, you know? More defensive because you've got the Justicia, and then the rapier is just, you, I don't know. If you have a rapier and an Avernic, it's just you get more accuracy or some shit. It'd be really cool. But then you're fucking with too many things at once, and then you've got to worry about power creep with that, and it contesting with the fang, and then the fang dies because you just use the rapier, Justy and TOA, and then... You know, people start crying, and it's probably best to just leave it for the Iron Man. That's my opinion. Next, you have what is this? A Zami Hasta. Um, Zami Hasta. Let me think. When's the last time I used the Zami Hasta? 
when I was poor. And what did I use it on? Is this a Huster or a Spear? This is a Huster. So, late game, nothing really. If you don't have the choice of a Bludgeon, um, I believe it's better than a Mace or a Cudgel or Nightmare. It's pretty decent on Tecton, uh, which you then would you know use through the raid, but you'd still use Whip on Ulm over it. Um, but it's cheap. They're fucking annoying because I can't seem to be able to pull any spears. Um, yeah, I, th I think the Huster's D tier. Can, you, can we behave? I think the Huster is D tier because I feel like its uses are becoming thinner and thinner with every update. The Huster is becoming less and less important because really what you're doing is you're turning it into a lance and you're leaving it. Zemi Spear, best inside of court. This is the Huster, not the Spear. This is the Huster. We can make it the Spear too. I don't think the Spear is on this list. So we can say Huster and Spear if you want to. I don't see a Spear. So if you guys would like me to do that, then I can change my opinion and we can analyze it as both weapons. Because it kind of can be. You can flip flop back and forth for 300k without any issues, right? Spear isn't best in slot at Corp anymore. Fang's better. No, the Spear is still better than the Fang at Corp. The, the Fang is better if you're going to camp and not drain defense. Uh, but I've tried doing solo. We're going to treat it as a Spear and, and a Spear and a Hasta. The Fang is better if you're doing the Corp method where you don't drain defense and you drop food. That method is the gayest shit I've ever done. I fucking hate that corp method. Yes, it's more kills per hour. It's also more wanting to kill yourself per hour. It's terrible. Dragon Warhammer isn't that hard to land. Use the spear uh, method with the Dragon Warhammer. You'll just enjoy corp more because it won't be that much more annoying. Um, so we're going to make it C tier. Okay, for the sake of spear and hustler, C tier weapon. Still good at corp. Monkey backpack. Who doesn't love a monkey backpack? I've never upgraded my monkey. But he's a good boy. He's S tier. He comes along the way. We love it. Um, this is... Oh, hold on. I've made a mistake, guys. This isn't Missouri Helmet. This is Missouri Armor. By the looks of it. Okay, my apologies. Take back what I said about the Missouri Helmet earlier. Well, take it into consideration. This is actually Missouri Armor. The whole set. Um, okay, then the Missouri Armor set, by default, goes B tier. That simple. Does anyone disagree with that statement? I think it's B tier armor at the end of the day. And I think there's many good reasons why it's B tier. One, everyone complained and still does complain about its price today because uh, I, I try to explain this to people and they're just idiots, they don't understand. But Missouri has too many direct competitives for range gear. Missouri is outclassed damage wise by Elite Void for Theater of Blood and Vorkarth, I believe. Um, and Missouri also has a big problem, which is you will buy the Tebow before you buy the Missouri. You won't buy the Missouri before you buy the Tebow. So realistically, like, why would you buy Missouri? What are you going to use it with? Because you're likely going to have a Bofa crystal. Uh, if you're running the crossbow the whole time, it's likely you're just going to buy Bofa crystal, especially with how much cheaper it is. You're going to get the Tebow, then you're going to get the Missouri. So you're looking at spending one point what six mil 1.6 bill sorry to fully utilize Missouri's potential and I think that's a, a flaw in its game blowpipe kind of rips of it yes but crystal bofa is better and crystal blowpipe is better value why would you buy what well, you're going to take a Missouri crystal switch with you everywhere or you're going to drop the bofa off completely and just run the blowpipe next to Zeke Zara crossbow are you going to Zara crossbow next the whole time or just spec are you going to have Ruby Bolt, I guess? I still don't think it is... <sighs> okay. Next. Uh, do you have fun doing next? You can if you want. You can commit to next all you like. But at the end of the day, Crystal Bofu isn't too bad. Crystal Crossbow isn't too bad either. Zarek Crossbow, at the end of the day, you're there using Ruby Bolt specs in next. So it doesn't matter what your range strength bonus is because you're looking to hit 100s, which is the bolts themselves, which doesn't... It's not affected by your strength bonus. So yeah, you can get a few extra max hit off with your bolts when they're normally hit, but you're there for the Ruby Bolt procs. So, Crystal does the same job that you're ultimately looking for at the end of the day. Do you know what I'm saying? Would you agree with that statement? I, I would say Missouri is outclassed by, by a certain gear um, and outvalued by other gear. 
And the problem it has is it has to compete with Crystal. It has to compete with, it compete with Carol's for fuck's sake. It has to compete with it. Because at the end of the day, yes, it offers the strength bonus, but the accuracy doesn't really change and the weapons are far more valuable than the Missouri armor. Where such how do you use blowpipe these days? Mostly in places like TOA, Theater of Blood, or you might use it on the Hydra's final phase. Um, it's not bad for like Slayer uh, skipping and stuff like that. Both is at the same price range. I agree, Crystal is better early game mid, but Missouri is best in slot when fortified. Of course it is, but Crystal still does great end game. Crystal Bofer is perfect. There's nothing wrong with Crystal Bofer. Yes, Missouri will do better, but Crystal Bofer still fucking hits hard, still super accurate, and you can still do all the same content Missouri does, just as well. Absolutely, I, I do. I do Crystal Bofer, t uh, Crystal Bofer, Tebo Infernos, and it's great. I've done a Missouri Tebo as well, as Missouri Inferno as well. It's great, but Crystal Crystal Bofer and then a Tebo as well in the Inferno is awesome. But my point is, you're not ri you're going to buy the Tebow before you buy the Missouri nine times out of ten. You're going to buy the weapon first, aren't you? If you if you had a Bofa Crystal, are you going to buy Missouri or you're going to buy Tebow first? You're going you're going to buy the Tebow, aren't you? The Missouri is going to come last because it's it's not worth it until you have the Tebow. Why are you running a Zarek crossbow outside of that? Like, no, you're not. You buy the TV first. You will. Next, we have Inquisitor's gear. Unfortunately, a pretty underutilized amount of gear because Crush has just always been shit. Then Nightmare came out, and Crush was great. Then TOA came out, and the meta changed. Next came out, the meta changed. It was all about stab. Crush fell off again. I love Inquisitors. I think it is awesome. I think it looks great. I think it feels great. I think what you can do, do with it is great with the Scythe. With the Karras, with the Dragon Hunter Lance, sorry, in Cox, I think it's awesome. Uh, I think it's good in LMS. I think it's dirt cheap right now. I think if you're gonna invest in something, I, I wouldn't mind investing in Inquisitors right now. It'll go back up one day. One day it will, but not right now, uh, which is unfortunate. It doesn't get much love, but I love it. It doesn't get much love by the game, but I think Inquisitors is fucking awesome, man. I think it's great gear. Makes Grotesque weak to crush. Grotesques have no defense, I believe. I think mean, they're weak to everything. If you can afford a TV, you can probably afford Missouri. Not always. Not always. Inquisitor paper, but good. Yes. Inquisitor is just so fun to use, man. Uh, why is there another Inquisitor's mace? All right. Well, that one's F tier for re being repetitive and in my face and annoying. Sears ring. Okay, this is worth about a mil at the moment. Uh, still F tier because it's in the same field as um, Archer's ring, where currently before Desert Treasure Two. It is garbage. You wouldn't use it anywhere. It makes no sense. I use it in LMS, actually. I, I take it back. Let's make a D tier because it wins me games in LMS most of the time. I do love it, okay? In LMS, it's good. It has value in there. Outside of LMS, it's crap. You wouldn't own it. But you would invest in it ready for the Desert Treasure Quest because if it's getting the Magic Strength bonus, you know it's going to go good with that Shadow, and that's all that matters. If you have one bill, are you going to buy the 300 mil item or the one bill item that's best in the game? You'd buy the weapon. Of course you would. If you have Missouri and Tebo, I would never use both for it becomes useless. Of course. Of course. But my point is you wouldn't buy the Missouri before the Tebo. Ideally, you just wouldn't. Also, cost for shards and armor adds up. Dude, crystal armor shards cost almost fucking nothing. Get out of it, man. Pegasian boots are crap. They have zero value. They are uh, no strength bonus. They are overpriced, overrated, hunks of garbage. Fuck the Pegasian boots. Actually, make them E tier just because uh, Ranger boots are a nice find. But the crystal is crap. But uh, yeah, E tier, they do look kind of cool actually. But otherwise, no, they are terrible boots. Don't put them on your feet, they stink. Bofa. I think the Bofa is going to be one of the weapons of all time in RuneScape, in old school RuneScape. The Bofa is one of the weapons of all time. Reason being is because no matter what, yes, there are better weapons. Yes, the Tebow is better. Yes, the uh, Missouri blowpipe combo can be better in some places. But, yes, the Bofa will always be reliable. The Bofa will always stand the test of time, and the Bofa will always be, currently, more accurate than any other ranged weapon in the game, on paper alone. Okay, combined with Crystal Armor, it is juicy. Bofa is reliable. When new content comes out, the Bofa is going to be something you want to at least try with if you can't afford a Tebow. You've got budget damage here. You can do every piece of content in the game with the Bofa, no matter what. This, the Blowpipe, before it was nerfed, was the Bofa, but shit. Because it didn't have the attack range. The Bofa made the Inferno accessible to a lot more people in the game. And in my opinion, I agree with you, Steam Hams. 
Overall, on a generic level, the best weapon in the game is the bow of Farben, Heden, Harden, Hugen, Schmugen, Daniel Hugenbugen. By far. I, I believe it is the best weapon in the game. It is simple. It is dirt cheap to run. It is, on occasion, cheaper to buy around 90 mil, 95 mil at the moment. I think people will criticize you for using a bofa, but they criticize you because their cocks are small. They have no clue what they're talking about, okay? They sit there watching streamers do content they wish they could do and then form their opinion off of that, sit at the top bank and rag you all day for having a bofa equipped. They don't know what they're talking about. Next we have the, what's this, a ancient wyvern shield? Um, F tier. Okay, moving on. The Elijah, can we stop with this garbage? The Elijah Spirit Shield. Places to use the Elijah Spirit Shield would be... Um... Shit. I can't think of it. I think it's D tier. I don't think the Elijah Spirit Shield has, is any good at all. Um, I think it is useless. Jack of all trades, master at none. Or oh, the... Both are, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think I think the Elijah and Spirit Shield is D tier because it's dropping in price for good reason because it's, it's becoming less useful. Gobbles Dungeon Bosses, but you don't need to anymore because you have a Bofa and a Shadow. You can just run rings around people. You've got the ball walk. You don't need it in the Inferno. You don't. We're full just in the Inferno. You don't need the Elijah and Spirit Shield. It is overkill. It is too much value for, for what it provides. To be honest, you're overkilling it. I, th I think D is the best place to put it because it does look pretty cool. But all you're doing with the Elijah is you're wearing it to be an asshole, right? People who have Elijah and Spirit Shields, sorry Tanya, but most of the time people who have Elijah and Spirit Shields are wearing it to be an asshole. I've got an Elijah, look at me. You're, you're just a bot magnet. You're looking for people to contact you to either talk about, wow, Elijah suck. Or you're looking to get um, scammed. And no one wants that. It's gone up 675 mil at the moment. That is not up. It used to be a bill like a year or two ago. Nowhere near it, mate. Got a casket, we got a sapphire. Very cool, from a, a quiz minigame. I think the Elijah's D tier, overall. Next we have the Armadil Godsword. Armadil Godsword. Um, this is the first Godsword we ever had on the game. And I'll never forget, we were doing Ulm. There's four of us, we were doing Ulm on the game. And Jay just runs out of nowhere and just AGS specs Ulm's hand. And it was the funniest thing ever, because I just was not expecting it. I didn't know he had it on him. Um, it's great. Great weapon. I take a PKing. It either hits 70s and knocks people out, or it hits zeros and people get away. So, I have a love-hate relationship with this. It does surprisingly well in LMS for me, though. I think... Uh, can I lock this? I can, can't I? But I've lost the menu, so I can't lock it anymore. Is there, is there a hotkey to lock something so I can stop moving it around? Um, in Photoshop? The AGS is going to be a C tier... B tier... A C tier Godsword, I think. It's kind of with the Dragon Claws. You'd own it for the sake of owning it if you had the money. But you wouldn't really buy the Armadil Godsword otherwise. It wouldn't really be something useful. It, they're, they're dirt cheap at the moment, but yeah, I think that's about as good as they get. The Light Bearer is my favorite. I love the Light Bearer. Light Bearer, everything, everywhere on my chest. S tier. Everyone shouted on the light bearer when they saw it. This is going to be worth two mil, one mil in a week. This light bearer is crap. Oh, wait, hold on a second. You mean I can spec again and again and again? No. Light bearer is chef's kiss. Beautiful ring. My favorite ring. Best ring in the game. Armadillo gear. Okay. Hello? What the fuck just happened? What? Why do I... Okay. Um, we, we, have a, we have a grid now. Around us. Armadil is, um... I hate to say it. Well, there's no better way to say it. E tier. It's shit. It's not F tier because it does have use. It's good value. Good to get as a drop. It is tanky. The problem is, is it's got negative mage and melee gear like, stats. Which makes it impossible, impossibly bad to, to try breed with. It's no point try breeding with it. Carols, crystal... Blessed Dehyde all provide just better value because they're, you can try breed with them. You can wear them in melee, wear them in mage, I guess, if you really wanted to, like Barrows. So, Armadil is so crap that the only reason it's valuable now is because of Missouri, really. That's it. You, you can't really do much else uh, with Armadil. It's garbage. Just dropping fish again. Give me a sec. Next, we have the Amulet of Fury, the S tier. 
amulet of S tier. Now, one, because this includes the Blood Fury, which is automatically, while expensive, an amazing neck piece, especially with the scythe. The other reason is, is because if I was you and you were learning the Inferno, and I'm not talking speed running, I'm talking you're going to the Inferno for your first ever time, first ever cape. I will tell you right now that the Fury is a better amulet to take and hard use than it is to take a switch with these two things. These two next here are less, uh, they're shitter than just one of these. This one boy will take them out easily. The accuracy, you won't notice the difference. The damage difference, especially in the Inferno, you won't notice the difference. You're either one hit in the nibblers or you're not, okay? Get over it. The Fury is a beautiful, beautiful neck piece and at, what is it? When, when can you make one on an Iron Man, like 90 crafting? You, you've got end game content around your neck pretty quickly. Very easy, very cheap to buy or make. Fury does everything you need. It's tanky, it's got a prayer bonus, it's got accuracy. What more do you need? It's beautiful. It is the best neck piece in the game. Now, like I said, you could go better with Xerites, Xerites for sure. That doesn't make them better neck pieces as a whole, especially with this tier list. But for Zuck, again, Anguish is nice in my opinion. Well, your opinion's wrong because you're a dickhead. Go do Zuck with an Anguish. Do, do 10 Zucks of Anguish. Do 10 Zucks with a Fury. Okay? But what... Okay, no. Even better. I will give you 20 accounts. You won't know which one has an Anguish or which one has a Fury. Do Zuck on all of them. You won't be able to tell which one has a fury, which one has an anguish. You won't have a clue. Your opinion is wrong. You won't be able to tell the difference. It's all up here. The equivalent, let me give you a better analogy. Okay, and I've used this before. Using, using an anguish, okay, put this back wherever that was. Okay, using an anguish over a fury in the inferno is like putting a new exhaust on your car. Okay, it's louder. It feels better. It feels good. It feels faster. You put it on the dyno, you, you send it down the quarter mile, you're getting the exact same times. You're not getting any faster, you're not getting any more horsepower, you've just made it louder, you've made it look prettier, you've made people go, oh, that's it. You're, you're not going any fucking faster. You can't notice the difference. It's a butt dyno. That's all it is. It's the exact same situation. It's all up here. I can tell you right now, the fury and the anguish, you will not notice the difference. You won't. I, I, I'll tell you that. For free, with a straight face, all day. Next we have Justy. A lot of people hate Justy. A lot of people don't hate Justy, they just don't use it, because why would you? Justy, it's defense, it's not strength bonus. The strength bonus is best in the game. So, Justy doesn't get a lot of love, which makes it cheap, which makes it good, because that means you can buy it. Um, and a lot of places I think you should use the Justy is, well, the main place is the Inferno. Full Justy in the Inferno, from level 50 onwards, way 50 onwards. Uh, people will criticize you, say don't use Justy, Justy Capes are cringe, it's not a real cape if you use Justy. Um, people that tell you that Justy Capes aren't real capes are the sort of people who will pay someone else to do their Inferno Cape for them because they don't have a fucking clue. Justy is beautiful and I highly recommend taking Justy into the Inferno. It is unparalleled how much easier it makes the cape. It did, like, put your ego aside, I mean my ego is pretty bad in there because I won't brew until I get to Zuck Healers. Which has happened every time I get my cape, by the way. Three attempts, three capes. Um, but that's just me being arrogant. Take the just into the Inferno. It just It's so much easier, man. It's so good. Otherwise, you're taking unnecessary risks and unnecessary damage. Justy, I think, is B tier. It's used as pretty much stop and start there. If you're doing group, like God Wars, sure. Um, you could also use it in place of uh, Proselyte if you want a bit more tank uh, to do um, Hard Food Slayer as well. But for the most part, Justy does... A beautiful job at what it does and it's cheap it's very good uh, I took Justy for my first cape wore it for three seconds you just wear it freeze get into position then put your mage, uh, range gear back on really that's about it next the ring of suffering now this is considering it's in, all rings are considered they're imbued uh, imbued and recoil charged this is a S tier ring I love this ring well the light bearer kind of knocked it off in Zora obviously it's the, the ring to go with but I don't really use it anymore since the Light Bearer came out because Specs are too good, especially with the Void Waker, which is unfortunately not on this list, but... Does it go A tier now? Yeah, I would put it S tier normally, because it's beautiful. It's tanky, provides damage, provides prayer. Often, more DPS than the Berserker Ring, people won't believe me, but um, that's because your DPS calculator doesn't calculate recoil and the damage you're taking, but it is a factor you need to consider. Um, 
Where's the table? I don't know. I don't see the table. Anon missed the table. We'll have to add the table, I think. Why is it not on here? Poor Anon. I don't see it on here. We'll have to add it. Um, I think it's A tier, just because the light bearer has made it so much better, in my opinion. T bow. Uh, oh, sorry. We can add. We can add them real quick. I'll add them slowly while I do the next item. Uh, download there. Download there. There we go. We got it. Let's do the Tebow. Alright. It's not going to have the, the cool uh, um, glow around it, but that's fine. Tebow, um, I think... I, I dare... I want to say Tebow is S tier. But part of me wants to make it A tier. It's one of these two. I don't know. I think it does noodle a lot, but that's not really fair to say because that's RNG, right? Like, what are you going to do? Its price makes it A tier. I don't think the price is a problem. I think its price is what makes it S tier, right? The price is good. That's what you want. Because the, the price makes it when you get the drop, you've, you've, you've filled your bank. Um, I, I feel like it should be S tier. I really do. Especially, I mean, I don't, I, I fucking, I have a love-hate relationship with the T-Bow because I love to shit on it and it hates to let me do damage. So, um, but, you know, it, it does do a good job as well and it really does help. My personal experience with the T-Bow is not very good. I have a lot of bad RNG. If, if, if it's not S, you're being whack. Shadow is already A. Shadow in A is already a sin. No, you're an idiot. Um, I think Shadow is pretty comfortably in A because of one small minor issue. I think the Tebow is S tier. Because of the value, it's a valuable bank changing drop, so is the Shadow. Um, yeah, and it really it really is. Of the three weapons, of the Scythe, Shadow and the Tebow, the Tebow is the mo it's the cheapest run. It's the it's the, the most versatile in terms of content you can do with it. Um, I wouldn't do a rebuild, no fucking way. I think S tier is probably fair for the Tebow. Has more uses than Shadow? It does, yes. When it noodles on Hydra, I want it to sell it. When it hits 80s, you love it? Exactly, yes. It's price compared to what's comparable, like the Bofer is so much cheaper, it's not even comparable. Of course. But that's not what you should just rate it on, you know? If Scythe is S, Tebow gotta be S? Well, t Scythe is S because it's, it's the most fun weapon to use in the game, regardless. Like, there's nothing better than the Scythe. It's so good. Elaborate on the shadow. You'll have to watch the video when I re-upload it. Otherwise, this video is already going to be longer than it already needs to be. I'm trying to re-explain items already. Um, I think T-Bow can go S tier, yeah. I think it can go S tier because it doesn't matter what range gear you have. It pops off. Whether you're using Black Dehyde, Carol's, Blessed Dehyde, Armadil, Crystal or Missouri, it does... It does what it's meant to do. The Shadow, you kind of need Ancestral to really push push its limits. And the Scythe, the same. I mean, Bandos it does a great job with, but um, I think Tebow, it's pretty much already where it's at before Missouri, you know? Missouri makes it better, but before Missouri, it still is exceptionally good at what it does. So I think that's that's why I, I, I could put an S here and be happy with that, I think. Uh, we've also got here the Void Waker will do. Uh, the Void Waker is without question S tier as well. There's not even a debate on that. It is the best spec weapon by far. It is so fun. It is so... It's, it's impossibly accurate, right? Uh, it's incredible. It's 160 mil. And you spec and everything dies. I love it. I, I think the Void Waker is S tier. And I think the only reason it wouldn't be S tier for some people is because they haven't used one yet. Now, in PvP, it's a bit of a cheese weapon, but that's totally fine because that's PvP is all about KOing these days. So just eat up to full health and hope you have better RNG. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Barrow's Gloves. I know we're getting a bit horny here with S tier, but Barrow's Gloves is also S tier weapon. Let me tell you why. Barrow's Gloves, there is not a single item in this game that provides better value at, what is it, 160k coins. You get a plus 12 strength bonus, which is better than any offhand any neck piece, any, any, the only thing better than that is a, is a main hand weapon when it comes to melee, as well as accuracy and ranged across the game. Of course, obviously the ferocious gloves, but barrows, 130k if you do diary, all you have to do is register for disaster. 
they are 100% broken. They're overpowered. They're overpowered for what you have to do, especially now in the game. Back in the day, they weren't because it took a lot of effort to do recipe for disaster. So, like, going for Barrow's Gloves is the best thing you can do. Put them over S. I can't. There's no S plus tier. You can have them S plus tier in your own mind if you want, but they're sitting at S with everything else. Zarek Crossbow. I think the Zarek Crossbow is comfortably a... Um, do I make it C tier? No, I think we put the Zarek Crossbow at B tier. I think it's a B tier item. Best in slot. I think so. Yes, I think it's best in slot at B tier. The reason the Zara Crossbow is B tier is simple. <laughs> right? You put it on, you spec, you put it back in your bag. That's it. Now you could say, oh, well, at next you use it. Well, if you're using it at next, you're a dickhead. Get a fang. Um. It does the spec better than anything else though. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's a guaranteed hit, or it's, it's increased accuracy, and if it does hit, it, it, it overcharges the spec, which is awesome, and I think that's great. Um, so otherwise, as I, and LMS, it's awesome too. Otherwise, you spec, you put it back in the bag, and you move on. So it's kind of shit, you know? Um, which you, you could say the same for the Void Waker, I guess, but the Void Waker, you can spec twice at least, and is fun, so. Um, yeah, that's that's it. There, double accuracy for spec. There you go. So, uh, you spec, then you put it back and you leave it. Din's Bulwark. Um, I think the Din's Bulwark is a C tier item because its item its uses are limited to surviving PKs, um, Kriara with a bow, or, or just Kriara in general, and tanking Gob Wars. That's mostly it. Or you could use it for like get, gathering people in, uh, gathering Slayer tasks up with the spec, uh, like at Necro and things like that. That's really fun. But otherwise, you'd only buy Dins or use the Dins if you had the spare cash. Otherwise, you can play the rest of the game without ever touching it, to be honest. AFK and Seracnus, no one's doing that. Like, that's, no. No one is doing that. Okay? Not happening. The Volley Nightmare stuff. Unfortunately, um, the Volatile Orb is the first and only Nightmare Unique I've ever had. And we still don't have a star, so we've got a Volley Orb and a Harmonize Orb. The shit thing is, is you would only use that the Kraken or PvP. And why would you use it in PvP when it's 55% spec? It's a waste. So it's an E tier stuff. Uh, it's about as shit as having no Orb in the staff at all, to be honest with you. It's kind of bad. Next, we got the Amulet of Torture. This goes comfortably, I think, at... I think you can... You can make it B tier, I reckon. Argument for B tier is best. Because it is high value, which means you've got to pay a bit of money for it. The Fury does a great job at not owning Zenite jewelry. Um, and Iron Man, from, from an Iron Man perspective, you have to go to pretty much max crafting to be able to make one, right? D with Anguish? Um, no, because I feel like... I feel like... With a Scythe especially, you can get better value than you can with an Anguish out of a Tebow. But also, um, I personally just like it more, I think. I would always run the Fury, and I, I, I would get the Torture before I went the Anguish, ideally. I would do Torture before Anguish, because I would use Melee more anyway. I feel like Melee could do with the boost more than the Anguish could do with the boost, even though the boost is almost non-existent. I like the Torture more. Fury better because, yeah, Fury's S tier, for sure. No upkeep, cost as opposed to Blood Fury. Well, that's if you want to use Blood Fury, but you don't need to use Blood Fury if you don't want to. The Fury is still amazing. Um, I, I just like the Torture more. I do. And the Ottoman Kit's not bad. You pay with Range and Fury. Well, it's, it's the same with the Torture, right? I, I don't know. What the, what sort of prayer bonus does the Anguish give? I'm not sure. Is it the same that the, the Torture gives? Someone's going to be mad about that in the comments section. Like, how can you put anguish in and then torture in two different tiers? Well, because fuck you. I do what I want. Uh, what the hell are these? What are these? Devout boots? Mainly used for Hydra? What? Most of us with a pro bonus. All right, you're banned. Hold on. Stop typing, guys. Let me ban. All right. Um, plus five pro bonus. Okay. Um, 
I... E tier, I guess. I don't know where you would use them or why you would, but should they're insane when bursting and chinning monkeys? Monkeys give you prey pots, dude. You don't need prey bonus down there. You, you, you profit prey pots. They're, they're E tier. I, I don't know why or where you would use them, right? Nightmare Zone? Boots? Hydra Boots? I, I guess so, but... I can't imagine ever fucking owning them. What a waste of time. BGS. No Dragon Warhammer on this list, is there? We need to add a Dragon Warhammer too. BGS is A tier. Is A tier. Now, it used to be really bad. The BGS used to be horrible. For those who don't know, the BGS used to be 60% special attack to use. Every other God Sword was 50%, but the BGS was 60%. And that made it bad because it was like, it was pointless. Why would you use a 60% spec when you have a Dragon Warhammer? Then they buffed it and made it 50% spec. It used to be worth like 2 or 3 mil. Now it's worth what it is now because the spec is useful. And that brought the AGS down as well because the AGS used to pioneer as best damage per spec God Sword. Now you can argue the BGS does too because it also drains defense, which is handy in PVM. So BGS is A tier because it's extremely accurate, reliable, and fun. Then we have Torva. There's no Bandus on here, is there? Oh, Bandus isn't best in slot, really, because Torva exists, I guess. Torva is, um... Hmm. Where does Torva go on this list? Does it go A tier? Or does it go B tier? A? B. I think it's B... A? You reckon A? Expensive as shit? Mm. Not always a contributing factor. I mean, it matters, but... Mm. Just trying to think. Sure, it's great. It looks kind of, you know, crap. The helmet does, at least. Um, the fuck? Um, but I think, for the most part... It's best in slot on next, I guess. It's best in slot in a fair few places, but just because it's best in slot, like... How does it rate as a best in slot setup? You know, how is Tors as best in slot, how good is it? Best strength bonus, and that's the meta? Of course it's the meta. Well, for the most part, it kind of is the meta. It's not really the meta in Wardens, is it? The Shadow is in Mage. Um, but you'd use it on the core, but like, even without Torva, you're still going to get a 2 or 3 down if you wanted to. Question is where is where do you absolutely need this over Bandos? Well, not really anywhere. Let's be honest. Like um, speed running, sure, but we're not here to speed run. We're here to discuss how it does its best in slot. And like Inquisitors is better than it, I believe in Cox, especially in a solo. So it's not really best in slot solo Cox. Getting it as an Iron Man is um, is buns and it's expensive as fuck. B. Yeah, that's true. Like next does fucking suck. I think B tier is acceptable. It could be A tier. You could argue for it to be A tier. But I think it's going to be B tier. And the reason, the, the defining factor why I want it to be B tier is because I know it's also going to upset some people and I relish in that. So I think that's going to tip the scales. Unbiased, that's going to tip the scales. Death bonus is amazing. Defense bonus is huge. It is massive, yes. Um, and Tob, you'd run it all day, of course, but I'm happy with it in B tier. Is Dragon Defender not listed? Oh, there's a Vernic Defender. You wouldn't have Dragon because there's a Vernic, which is next. Primordial Boots. The only boots that actually add some sort of value to your DPS in the game. Um, with a few negatives. They're expensive, they're overrated, and the DPS they add are shit, to be honest. Uh, these boots are terrible. Let me tell you why. What, can you fuck off my screen? So the reason these are shit... Fuck off. Uh, why? I fucking hate Photoshop. The reason these are shit. Okay, I'm, I'm putting them. I'm putting them in. Um, I'm putting them in uh, either D or C tier. I think I want to say D. Yeah, I think that uh, I think they're in D tier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the reason they're D tier is because as a as boots, okay, they provide some value, of course. Of course, they provide some value. And how much are, how much are Primordial Boots at the moment? Can someone look them up for me? Uh, they're, they're what? They're price... 
Uh, press primordial. You're looking at 26 mil for primordial boots that give a plus five strength bonus. For 200k, you can get plus four. And all you have to do is just mute every dickhead that goes not wearing prints. <laughs> yes, okay, prints might look better. 26 mil? You can't take anyone seriously. That's if, if, if anyone comes to you and is saying you can't raid with us, you don't have a Dragon Warhammer, and uh, you don't have prims, but you're wearing Dragon Boots, and you got a BGS, just don't play with them. That, like, you're playing with people who are going to do whatever they can to take advantage of you and, and fucking steal from you anyway. Like, what sort of mindset is that? That is such a terrible mentality. That, those are not the sort, that's not the energy you want to have in this game. It's terrible. Only buy with excess money, which is why it's D tier. You would only buy it if you had the money for it. Guardian boots are better than Prims? Oh, for sure. Guardian boots are better value because they're cheaper and they look good. I think they look better than Prims, to be honest. It's fucking awesome. What's up, ba uh, Bad Mama Jama? How you doing? Next, the Avernic Defender. This used to be eight, uh, S tier because it was like 30 mil. Now it's like 80 mil again. What, what, what are they? Price? Oh my god, I'm going to kill myself. Why, why is there a grid now? Stop. Okay. Thank you. Uh, price Avernic. Uh, Avernic, so we're looking at 83 mil now. 83 mil. They're over double what they used to be. Mostly because of TOA. Needing the strength bonus. What? What happened to it? It's gone invisible. Alright, you can see the outline. This is in Avernic, okay? I fucked up somewhere and I don't know where. Um, so I think now they're A tier because they're a lot more expensive than they used to be. A lot more expensive. But they're still amazing. It's great. It's an amazing weapon. Uh, sorry, an amazing offhand. Next we have Ferocious Gloves. I think Ferocious Gloves sit comfortably at... What's... The... Is there a requirement for Ferocious Gloves? Eighty defense and eighty attack. I think you reckon B tier, really? They're pretty cheap. They're only seven mil. I was thinking A. I think A tier. Just be, like they can't be Barrier's Class. It's Barrier's Class one. That you have the tribe potential of like uh, the, the, all the tribe potential you need. To be honest, it's, it's really hard to give you an analogy. Um, Fresh Class do a better job melee wise. That's about it. Um, but they're cheap. It's 7 mil. You just need 80 defense and 80 attack, which means pures can't use them, which means uh, they're not for the gays, um, which is exceptional during Pride Month. Um, so, yeah, like, I don't, I don't see a need to have the Ferocious Gloves below A tier. B, melee only? Well, that's not really a problem because you just bring switches and you're good, right? Um, they're way better value and way, way, a way better addition to the the combat triangle than the Zarat Van Braces ever will be, 100%. So I, I think absolutely. Because they're cheap, they're free, they're easy. Then you've got the Dragon Warhammer, which isn't on the list, but I've added it. It's okay. Dragon Warhammer is a comfortable B tier spec weapon. Because I think, and because of TOA, well, not, actually, not because of TOA, I just think it's, it's crucial that we as people, especially content creators, because people listen to content creators for some dumb reason. Content creators need to start discussing the Dragon Warhammer more and understanding that it is not that important of a weapon. It's really not. Dragon Warhammer is not that important. It never hits, of course. They need an upgrade for the Dragon Warhammer. The Stasius Hammer will be amazing or something like that. Give us an upgrade to the Dragon Warhammer that is either untradeable, that's hard to get, or something expensive that attaches, like the Avernic, to make it better. Um, but let's not blame the RNG on the spec for it being bad. Let's blame the necessity of the Dragon Warhammer. There are people that won't do cocks of you unless you bring a Dragon Warhammer. I can, I can confirm. I've done at least 20 plus raids. More than that. Solo cocks. Not, not in total. Just like where, where in those raids I have had the Dragon Warhammer hit nothing through on the whole time. About 20 plus raids where all of them have been zero, 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 zero. And I still go deathless and get the kill. Now, it's harder. It is a harder kill. It is a bit annoying. 
but that doesn't make it impossible. And if you're going in a team, you need one hammer in a team. You go on the top, you need one hammer. Two would be cool, I guess, but one hammer will be fine. Tier where you don't even need it. The drag wall hammer is overrated. I'm glad it's only 20 something mil now. It's dirt cheap. Uh, price dragon war hammer. What's it worth now? 20, 30 mil? Like that, that is so good. Because it used to be about 50, 60 mil. And it was just overpriced garbage. Because people felt like you had to have one to be able to run top when you already had three on the fucking team. I know that sometimes it misses, so it's good to have more. But it is not a necessity. Absolutely not. Be a gamer and, and trade the one hammer mid kill. Yeah, do that. Um, I think the war hammer is B. You could say it's C, but I think the light bearer has made it better because you have more chances to swing it now, but shit. If you think the war hammer is better than B tier, go do a solo CM or just go do a CM in general and tell me how much fun you have with it on Tekton. You know, people complain about it on, on Corp. Why do you think? It's crap. Berserker Ring. The only of the Dagonoff rings that actually add damage to you. Uh, Berserker Ring is C tier. Now, Berserker Rings, I, I believe the main value of the Berserker Ring comes from the Scythe because of the way the Scythe works. And that's mostly it, to be honest, because otherwise you're better off running a Light Bearer, even a Berserker Ring Switch. I do run a, run a Berserker Ring Switch in for Sunny Nightmare, specifically for the final phase when I'm Void Waker specking. Um, but otherwise, there's almost no need to ever run the Berserker Ring until the new rings come out, at least from Desert Treasure. But at this current point in time, the only time you'd have a Berserker Ring is if you got the spare money. Like, you would barely run it in any content these days. I don't care what you say, you're wrong. The Light Bearer offers too much value as with specs. A slash S if Light Bearer wasn't a thing. I would probably put a B if Light Bearer wasn't a thing. Because to be honest, the Suffering still provided great value. And the Suffering more often than not can give more DPS than the Berserker Ring if you have recoils on. Especially if you're running Void in... Which, I don't know who runs Melee Void in top, but some people do. If you're getting absolutely fucking cleaned up, getting hit for constant 30s, all that damage is being recalled, you're telling me you're not putting that into consideration? It's a thing. Absolutely. B-Ring good for AFK Slayer? I think so, but I think there's a better ring, which is also not on the list that we're going to add right now. I, th I think Berserk Ring is another overhyped ring, which, is, while it, I'm not saying it's bad, I just think its value is heavily misplaced. By the opinion of players and creators. Because the Ring of the Gods. If you don't have a Light Bearer. Oh no, it's, it's, it's expensive. What is it? It's worth... Uh, oh, it's only 4 mil? Oh, thank God for Jagex not shutting down bots, eh? Because of Jagex and their incompetent team at letting bots run wild in the wilderness. You can now afford a Ring of the Gods. Get the Berserk Ring and throw it in the fucking bin. Okay? Why is the Visage F tier? Because no one uses it. So, the Ring of the Gods is the ring of choice for everything that you're not using Light Bearer for. Slayer, Inferno, Ring of the Gods is chef's kiss. Imbue that shit, you go all day, dude. The, the cock ring, that's it. Yeah, dude, the fact that it's 4 mil now is disgusting. In fact, the fact that it's 4 mil almost makes it S tier. I'm going to put it here, so it's slightly closer to the S tier. That is dirt cheap, man. If not mole sippies, what boot are you wearing into TOA? I don't know. I haven't got to that point yet in the hardcore. So I'll find out when, I'm, when I get there. Mystic Snow Smoke Staff, totally underrated staff. That's not a best in slot staff. Now we have the Elder Mall. Now, due to controversial reasons and bias reasons, this is the only mega rare I've ever had in my name when raiding. I've done like well over 1,000 KC of all raids put together easily. This is the only mega rare I've had in my name. I've seen one Tebow, I've seen like two or three Scythes. That's it. <laughs> I may have seen a Kodai as well, maybe. But this is the only Mega Rare I've had in my name. So it holds a special place in my heart. Big Donks. I got hit for a 60 on LMS with this the other day, but I back to back 50 plus on someone in LMS. So this isn't. This is, this is A tier. Because running around with it is incredible, hitting cunts with it is incredible. It's best in slot at Cerberus if you use the door method because the attack speed's that slow anyway. It's best in slot at Cowfight Queen because if you're using the stand under method, the attack speed is uh, slow enough for that to be the best value anyway. It is awesome. I love the Elder Maul. Great weapon. Uh, Ring of Endurance Fire 2. Ring of Endurance is not on here, unfortunately. Uh, we've got the Avis Backpack. Um, in my opinion, this is the best backpack in the game. Uh, sorry, the best cape slot. It's better than the Inferno Cape. It's better than the fire cape, it's better than a mage cape. The reason is, is because this cape brings your ammunition back, which unless you're using a bofa, uh, saves you a lot of money. A lot of money. 
So this is pretty uh, S tier. Can't argue with that. I know, and fan A, strength bench, shut the fuck up, all right? It's beautiful. Isn't blue Karis best in slot cow fight? Yeah, if you're attacking her before game ticks. But if you're, if you're standing under her to flinch her, eld them all. Uh, we've got the heavy ballista. Only use is in the wilderness, in my opinion. But it's fun, because if you're anti pk Void Waker, Heavy Ballista, Tully Blocks. The PK will either A, fuck off, or B, die. Those are, those are their two choices. All you need is a Void Waker and a Heavy Ballista. I prefer the Crossbow because it's harder for them to eat their way out of the, the DPS it puts out, but the Ballista is fun. But otherwise, you would never own one. Like, it is pointless. So it's D tier, really. That's it. It's fun, but uh, you're not really doing much else with the Ballista. It's the only... It's the second most accurate range weapon in the game behind the Bofa, but you're not really using it, let's be honest. It's too slow. Too slow. All you need is a 160 mil weapon, but yeah, Void Waker Ballista. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 100%. Ancestral. Ancestral, I think, especially when twisted, is A tier. Maybe even S tier. I do love Ancestral. But it's expensive. But it's good. Those are A tier. I don't know. I love it, especially when Twisted. It's great. Twisted, well, Twisted is amazing. I don't have an Ancestral top yet in the game, which sucks. I'm, I'm thinking S tier. Especially with the, like with any Mage Gear, but it, like the Shadow pops off with it. Um, I think it looks too good to not be S tier. It, it is good looking gear. Absolutely. It is S tier. It is better than Torva. It's better than Missouri. It's cheaper than both of them. It's beautiful. It looks fucking good, man. Ancestral is S tier. Which brings us to the Tormented Bracelet, which I'm going to put at B tier. I think. C tier. Um... I think C tier for the for the for the tormented bracelet. I think that's acceptable. Now the reason I do that is because it's expensive. It's a high crafting level, and I know Aaron's does the job, but um, Ancestral looks way better. Um, the reason the tormented bracelet is C tier is because it requires the occult to be worth the money. Like you wouldn't really run a fury and a torn bracelet, but you. But the occult's cheap, so that's why you'd go occult first, then you go torn bracelet. Like, I, I would never buy the tormented bracelet unless I had occults first. Because it just wouldn't make sense. I, Mage Key is on the Mage Key's not on the list, no. I'm here late, so sorry if this was covered, but why wouldn't Ward replace Arcane, thus either making Arcane... Uh, I did talk about it, you'll have to watch the video when I re-upload it, unfortunately, because I don't want to go back and talk about everything, because the video is going to be even longer than it needs to be already, but... Um, yeah, I, I think the torn bracelet is C tier, just purely based on... The fact that it requires the occult to really be worth the money and be worth the time, I think. Cut I wand. Um, <sighs> Cut I wand's B tier because outside of Inferno, some people may use it in Tob. Uh, you may use it for bursting, but otherwise, you're not really using it anymore. Especially with all the stuff they're trying to boost Ancients with the Scepter and everything, it's kind of pushing the Kodai away from it being necessary. Is Void on the list? No. Um, I didn't make the list, by the way. I think I think Kodai can be B tier pretty well. Um, it's a better value um, Mega Rare than the Elder Maul, which means it is a better value drop, but it's not as fun. Um, and as an Iron Man, you need to do Mage Training Render to even use it. So I'd probably yeah, make it C tier, because you wouldn't buy one unless you had the money. I think. And you could do the Inferno and stuff easily without it. Like, it's not necessary. I think. You, you're not going don't, to... Don't compare everything direct. Like, wow, you would buy the Kodo... If it was here... Sorry. If it was up here, you'd buy the Kodo over the Torn. That's not the point. It's just them individually, why they're rated or why I'm rating them. Not trying to, I'm not trying to compare them with each other too heavily, you know? That's what I'm trying to not do at least. But I, I think because of... Because of what you're doing with the Kodai, you can do with cheaper gear. Like, you can just do it with a Master One. You don't have the magic damage, sure, but... 
Like at the end of the day, where you're using the Kodai, the magic damage isn't really the point, so it doesn't really matter. So I think that's fine. The Swift Blade is a pretty just generic, like it's 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 D tier. Like it's awesome and everything, but there's one place you're using it and that's Theater of Blood. Or if you're arterial skipping, um, and even then it is absolutely not necessary in any world. I know it's great and it's faster times in Nilo Room, but it is not necessary because you can achieve the KC easily with a whip and do fine. Uh, I love the Swift Blade. I use the Swift Blade, I think it's great. But I use it because we have one, not because I feel like we need to. I've never felt the need to use the Swift Blade. I just use it because it's cool. Um, but for that reason, it's D tier. Then the Dragon Medium Helmet. Um, nothing looks better. I'll never forget the first Mass Cox we ever did uh, back in the, the days on Twitch when I was a cuck. Um, which, you know, not streaming on Twitch anymore means we're no longer a cuck. Um, I will never forget Gonads, I believe, rocked up in Void with a Dragon Medium Helmet and it was the best thing I ever saw. Um, and for that reason, it is S tier. I don't think there's much else to put on this list. Do you guys feel like we've missed much or anything? There might be a few things we missed, like Infernal Cape we could put on here. Um, this is, Anon made the list, so he may have forgotten a few things. Evidently, some, you know, a lot of the tier lists I've had in the past from Jay and stuff as well have, so it's okay. We'll add the Infernal Cape, and we're going to put the Infernal Cape at the... Um, we're going to put Infernal Cape at... B tier, A tier, maybe A tier. It's A or B tier, I don't know. It does look good. It does look very good. But it is in no way necessary at all. It is overhyped. It's overrated. It's an ornament kit on your fire cat. That's what it is. I haven't done the Mage Cage too. I'll, I'll do that in a sec. Uh, but uh, Bandos isn't on the list because you have Torva, even though I know Armadale is, but Missouri is as well. I know. Um, I think I think B tier for Infernal Cape because the, the 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 tipping point for me again is the same tipping point as Torva, and it's that all the sweat bags that have so much pride in their one KC bought Inferno Cape won't like that I've said it. But to be honest with you, yes, the Inferno Cape is great, but you're buying it so people accept you. You're going for the Inferno Cape because people accept you, not because it's a game changing. Because it's not okay. You can run a 5k for years. I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, we'll do Osiris MA2 cape. And then I think that's it. Do the Major Indicate just to go, you know, with the Avers. Um, which will give us... We'll do the best cape. Which is the only one that matters. Which is the... Imbued Zamorak cape. Now this applies for Guthix and Saradomen. Though I, I'm a firm believer that if you're a Guthix... You're a fence-sitting bitch because Guthix is a fence-sitter. And Sarah, well, I know it's Pride Month, but uh, Sarah is gay. Okay. Zami, best all the way. And this cape is probably D C tier because they're kind of shit, to be honest. Like, they got great magic accuracy, but like, fuck. Like. I mean, that's it, really. They, they don't they don't really offer a whole lot at the moment. 2% magic damage, the so 15% magic accuracy is great and all, but like the, Inf the Inferno Cape does over half of that at a more comfortable rate. The Fire Cape does, like, how many people do you see running the Mage Cape? With, unless they want to do the, the, the fucking switches. They don't, you know, no one, no one wants to run it unless you're doing eight way switches, seven way switches, or you're running a shadow. So I run it, but that's just because it's more, it's more comfortable doing the more switches, so. I think it's the least necessary cape of the lot. I uh, don't think there's much else. We could argue that Bandos could go on here, and I'll put Bandos at B tier, because um, I think Bandos, for the value and the, the, the stats that it provides, um, makes it incredibly good gear. You could do what it needs to be done with Barrows, but yeah, that's pretty much what I'll put there. Obi Cape isn't best in slot, guys. This is the best in slot tier list, not well, what items should go where tier list, okay? Obi Cape isn't best in slot. Bandos isn't arguably either, but Armadillo is on here for the sake of it, so you should, you could declare Bandos. And there's some items on here that aren't best in slot, I get that. Major off hands, no, you got the best in slot major off hand here. Don't need books, got books, no, no. Uh, um, that's about it, to be honest, guys. That is the best in slot tier list. Sorry it took so long, uh, but the quick rundown, F tier, if you use any of these items, you're a dickhead, 
salamanders, archer's ring, uh, any dra dragon visage sealed. Uh, Inquisitor's mace is there because we got it twice. So uh, the second one goes to F tier because it's a you know, cheeky item. Um, e tier is basically items that I wouldn't buy. Uh, I, some people have value. Like you can see value in these items, but it's more coping. Armadillo crossbow. You're only the only reason you have an armadillo crossbow is because you just you just got the drop. You're selling it. Barrel test anchor is cope because you feel like you need defense reduction. Zamorak godsword is used like one place. Um, volatile and nightmare staff same. Staff of the dead if it's not PvP, not using it. Warriors ring you're never using it. Rapier is for iron men and women. Um, no one with a brain uses it. Armadillo is crap. Uh, Pegasians and devout boots uh, they're shit. D tier are items you would buy if you had the spare money. Um, even though you wouldn't really use them, you know? They're, that's just like, yeah, I've got spare cash lying around, I might buy it to use it. Um, but, like, you don't need these to achieve any end game content in the game. C tier, um, you would buy these before you bought D tier, but, like, you don't need Dragon Claws or an Armored God Sword, but if you had the money, go for it. It's a good spec weapon, good fun. Um, if you had the spare cash, yeah, sure, buy the Kodai. The Twisted Buckler is nice, but, you know, B tier, you start moving to items that. You can find value in these items. You can understand why these items have the value they have, and you could utilize them. They are not the best at what they do. They are not the most enjoyable to use sometimes. There is a RNG problems, or they just feel like they're more effort than what they're worth. But these items will get the job done that they're meant to get done. A tier, if you have these items, you should feel happy about yourself. You've got good items, you've got a good bank, and you have good value in what you use in this game. And S tier, if you have anything in S tier, you're winning. You're having fun. You're having a good time. You're playing a good game. And now we're going to play the Hardcore Iron Man. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck me. Look at that boy. It's huge. You got a big boy. 